y'all, this is Mrs. D and welcome to another video. We're gonna continue with graphs and today we're gonna talk about independent and dependent variables in graphs. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you need to know is that the value that changes based on the other amount is the dependent variable. So let's talk about this for a minute because we know that if something is dependent, then it depends on the other thing involved. So in this case, we're talking about an equation where one thing depends on the other. And so typically, we would consider this with some information as far as the problem and what it's about. So the distance per hour depends on the amount of time. So in this situation, the farther you go depends on how much time has passed. So that means that distance is the dependent variable because distance depends on the amount of time. For example, if Joe drives at a constant speed of 45 miles an hour, we can use that information on our table to fill out how far he goes in certain amounts of hours. So let's talk about this here. We have our X value, which is one, two, three, four, five. Those are our hours. And then we have our Y value, which is Joe's distance, and in this case, his distance depends on his speed. So we're just considering that he's driving at a constant speed. So in the first hour, if he goes at 45 miles per hour, that means he would have gone 45 miles. After hour two, he's gone 90 miles. Hour three, 135. Hour four, 180. Hour five to 25, hour six to 70, and hour seven, 315. So the more hours he drives, the farther his distance. So the distance depends on the amount of time. That means that distance is our dependent variable and the Y value is usually the dependent variable. So it is in this case, normally you're gonna see the Y value as the dependent variable. Next, the consistent value is called the independent variable. So let's talk about what this means. So we know that if we're dealing with distance and time, your time is the independent variable because time is happening no matter what. That's not gonna change depending on what's happening. Things are going to change depending on the time. In this case, we're talking about the cost per hour. So the cost per hour depends on the amount of time. So time is the independent variable in this case. Let's look at an example. So Sue rents a kayak for $20 an hour. So if I fill out this table, my time or my hours in this case is the independent variable and then the amount of money that Sue spends is the dependent variable. So let's figure this out according to our numbers here. So it says that she's gonna rent a kayak for $20 an hour. So the first hour it's gonna cost her $20. The second hour, it's gonna cost her $40. The third hour, 60. The fourth hour, 80. The fifth hour, 100, and so on. Now, it doesn't say that she only has to spend $10 for a half an hour. It says $20 an hour. So depending on how long she rents it for is going to depend on how much money she spends. So in this case, the X value is our independent variable, and that would be our hours. So now we're gonna graph the ordered pairs to determine if the values are continuous or discrete. So we talked first about the independent and dependent variable. The independent variable is going to be our X. So let's talk about this example here where Dro is driving at a constant speed of 45 miles per hour. So here's our table that we already filled out and we didn't include the entire table but enough to 
graph it. So let's go ahead and graph these points. So we have zero, zero, or our origin right down here at the bottom. This is only the first quadrant. If you watched the last video about the parts of the graph, these are all positive values. So we only need our first quadrant here. So we're gonna start at our origin and we're gonna go X is gonna be one and Y is gonna be 45. So I'm gonna go ahead and label this real quick. And then we're gonna go up. We'll just go ahead and count by uh, 20s. And if your graph isn't labeled, you can always label it whatever is gonna work for your numbers. Obviously, if we labeled our Y axis over here by ones, we wouldn't have enough room to get all the way to 180. So we're labeling it according to the numbers that we have. So we know at the first hour, Joe's gonna drive 45 miles. So that's gonna go right up here. For the second hour, Joe's gonna drive 90 miles. The third hour, Joe's gonna drive 135 miles. In the fourth hour, he's gonna go 180 miles. And we know if he continues at this speed, he's gonna continue driving until he stops. So let's talk about the continuous or discrete part of this. Now, this is going to depend on what's happening in the situation. And in this case, Joe is driving at a constant speed of 45 miles an hour. Now that means that he starts at zero and he continues to drive at a constant speed of 45 miles an hour. He's not driving for 45 seconds and stopping or anything else. Driving is a continuous action, therefore he's driving at a continuous rate. So is this a continuous or discrete graph? We would call this a continuous graph. And the reason why is because it's a continuous action. He's gonna continue driving until he stops and he's gonna drive at a constant speed. For the next part, we're going to graph the ordered pairs again and determine if the values are continuous or discrete. So let's look at our other situation. Well, we're gonna go back to Sue and she's gonna rent a kayak for $20 an hour. So let's look at our table here in our graph. We're gonna go ahead and label this. So I'm gonna put my origin down here. Again, we have all positive values. So we're only gonna be using our quadrant one. So again, I'm gonna label the x-axis one, two, three, four by ones. And my y-axis, I'm gonna go ahead and label by tens. And you'll notice I have to label according again to the numbers in my table. All right, so let's go ahead and graph our points. So on the first hour, Sue spends $20. The second hour, Sue spends $40. The third hour, she's gonna spend $60. And the fourth hour, she's gonna spend $80. Now, even though she's kayaking this entire time, does she get a certain rate based on how long she kayaks if it's for a certain amount of minutes? If she stops before the hour is over, she still has to pay for the full hour. So these dots are not gonna be connected because she's getting charged for every hour that she uses the kayak, and it's $20 an hour. So is this graph continuous or discrete? So this one would be discrete, and the reason why is because she's not getting paid for the number of minutes she kayaks, she's getting paid for the number of hours. So she has to pay each hour, regardless of how long she actually uses the kayak. So let's go ahead and recap here. So first, uh, the values that changed based on the other amount is the dependent variable. So the first thing we talked about is when one value depends on the other one, we call that the dependent variable. And this is usually going to be labeled by the Y on your table or your graph. The consistent value is called the independent variable. So the variable that does not change 
or doesn't change based on what's happening with the other variable. And so one of the things we used as an example would be time. Time is going to be continuous and consistent no matter what. So as time changes, whatever our other value is, is going to change because of it. So the Y value is the dependent variable, the X value is your independent variable. And last, we were able to graph the ordered pairs to determine if the values were continuous or discrete. So continuous means that the action is happening continuously. Discrete means that we're going to have to pay in increments or whatever's happening is happening by increments. Another example of that discrete graph would be if you have a certain amount of people that are involved in something and you're having to uh, buy something for each person. You're not going to be able to buy something for half of a person. So that would be another discrete graph where we're not continuously connecting everything because we have to buy something per person and you can't have half of a person. So this had some new information as far as the independent and dependent variables go, but if you still need more help, watch this video a couple of times, then be ready to ask some specific questions. This is Mrs. D signing off with independent and dependent variables in graphs. I hope you have a great day. Bye.